Well, hello everybody, and welcome again. It's me, Jonathan, and I'm back, as promised, to tell you the next part of the story of the great King David. But before I do that, I wanted just to thank all those children who'd come along to our Christingle service last Sunday. It was a lovely, lovely day uh, in church, and it was great to have so many of you contributing to worshipping God. Um, particularly thank you to the children who led our prayers, um, who read the lessons, who answered questions, but for all who came, I just joined in and made it such a happy, happy occasion. It was lovely, lovely to see you. But back to King David. You'll remember from last time that David was the youngest of eight brothers and his job was looking after the sheep. Now at that time, there was a war going on, a war between the people of Israel, David's people, and the Philistines, who were another country in that part of the world. And David's three oldest brothers had gone off to join the army to fight the Philistines. And the two armies were formed up um, in a big valley. There's one army on one side, and one army on the other. On one side, you had the Israelites, led by King Saul, and including David's two bro three brothers. And on the other side, you had the Philistines. And every morning, um, after they had breakfast, they'd line up on the two sides of the valley, make a lot of noise and shout insults at one another, and say, we're going to beat you, we're going to beat you. And among the Philistines, there was one enormous man whose name was, anybody know? I can hear people shouting out, his name was Goliath. Goliath was enormous. According to the Bible, he was about nine feet tall, and broad with it, and he carried an enormous helmet on his head, big shield, armour, sword, and a spear. He was absolutely terrifying. And every day he'd come down and say, who'd like to fight me, you cowardly Israelites? Whoever can beat me, if you can beat me, all the people of the Philistines will be your servants. They'll do whatever you ask. But if I beat you, then you will have to be our servants. And at that, the people of Israel went very quiet because he was a very scary man. Meanwhile, David was continuing to look after the sheep. But one day, his dad, Jesse, said to him, David, I want you to go down to the valley where the two armies are formed up and I want you to get, take some food to your brothers. Here's some bread. Here's some couscous. Here's some cheese. Take it along. Make sure they've got it. Keep safe. And then come back to me. So off David went. And he got there early in the morning. Just in time to hear Goliath getting up on his hind legs. And shouting at the people of Israel as he did every day. And that made David very angry. Who does this guy think he is, says, said David. Doesn't he know that we've got God on our side? We can beat him, we can beat all his people. And he said, I'm going to go and talk to the king about this. And so off David went, very bravely, and went to see King Saul. And King Saul very kindly agreed to see this little lad and hear what he got to say for himself. And David said, I think I can deal with Goliath for you. Saul tried not to laugh. Oh, he said, you think so, do you? Um, aren't you a little on the... Um, 
actually very on the uh, small side, a bit young. Um, Goliath is a very, very big man, a very, very experienced fighter. Um, wouldn't you like to have second thoughts about this? No, Sir David, I think I can deal with him. I look after the sheep in our family, and I have to protect them from wild bears and from lions. And if I can deal with lions and wild bears, I can deal with this, this guy Goliath. You just watch. OK, said King Saul, if that's what you want, I'm not going to stop you. But let me see if I can do something for you. What I'll do, before you go and fight Goliath, you can borrow my armour. Oh, thank you, sir, said David. You have to say that to a king, don't you? Thank you, sir. Well, thank you, sire, I suppose he said. And, sure enough, Saul took his great big coat of mail and he put it on David. And David put on this coat of mail, even though it was rather heavy. He put it on, and under the weight of it, he got it in position. There we are. He began to sag a bit under the weight of this coat of mail. And then, Saul said, you better have my sword as well. And he gave him this great big sword. And David sagged a bit more under the weight of it. That's a great coat of mail, said Saul, but you need a shield as well. And he got his great big shield. And he gave that to David. And David sagged even more under the weight. We need to protect your head, said Saul. You better wear my helmet as well. And so he put his helmet on David. And by this stage, David was down on his knees under the weight of all this stuff. Please, sire, he said. I don't think this is going to work. I can't move under all of this. I'm going to have to take it off. So David did. He took off the heavy helmet. He picked up the shield and put it on one side. He lay down Saul's incredibly heavy sword and he managed to wriggle back out of that heavy coat of mail. Oh, that's better, said David. I can manage now. But what I do need to take with me is my shepherd's crook. Here it is. And I'm going to take my sling, which is what I use to fight those lions and bears. And I'll take some stones as well, because they might come in handy. Saul simply shook his head, wished him well, and David headed off back to the valley where the two armies were still lined up, shouting insults at one another. David shouted out, Oi! You! Goliath! he said. Goliath looked down at the small boy and laughed. I'm going to fight you, said David. Goliath really did laugh out loud now. But slowly, from one side of the valley, little David walked forward, carrying his staff and his sling. And from the other side of the valley, 
the great big Goliath strode forward all nine feet of him until they were about 50 yards apart in the middle of the valley. The two armies went silent to watch what would happen. Goliath just stood there and said, Come on, youngster, come and see what you can do. David took out of his pocket his little stone, put it inside his sling, and waved the sling around and around and around and around and threw it at Goliath. The stone whizzed through the air and hit Goliath. right in the middle of his forehead. And Goliath fell backward with an enormous thump. And that was the end of Goliath. The two armies watched in amazement. And then the Israelite army cheered loudly. Hooray for David, they shouted. And the Philistines simply turned their backs and ran. They ran away. And in the days that followed, David became a great man in Israel. Saul made him a commander in his army and even gave him one of his daughters to be his wife. And in time, David became king himself. But that's another story. So, that's the story, as probably many of you know, of David and Goliath. Story of how a young lad managed through faith in God, with God's help, to achieve things that nobody imagined for a moment he would be able to do. So let's say a prayer. Dear Lord God, we thank you for stories. We thank you for the story of David who despite being young and little, showed that with your help he could achieve great things. May we, with your help, also achieve more than anyone could imagine. Amen. So that's it for this week, everybody. But I'll be back next week with something rather special for the end of term. I won't tell you what it is, but I hope you're going to enjoy it. Goodbye for now.